Well, it's so great to have you here. It really is a thrill for me to have you here. And, um, I, you know, I, I, if, you, if you don't mind, I want to tell you a story about how I discovered you and how you came into my life. I was living in Las Vegas. I was flying home to visit my family in Brooklyn. I was a teenager, and this college girl was seated next to me. And she said, what kind of music are you into? And I went like, oh, I don't know, you know? And she said, do you like Bruce Springsteen? And I'd heard of you, but I didn't really know about you. And she gave me her Walkman and let me listen to your music the whole rest of the flight. And from then on, you and I have been a team, even though you, you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. It's a good. <laughs> and this is an actual photograph. This is my band leader, Cleto, and me when we were, I think I was like 16, 17 years old. This is my Christmas present, was your box set. <laughs> so. 1986. You look good. So I'm excited <laughs> to have you here. Your mom's from Brooklyn, right? Yes, she is. She is from Bay Ridge. Bay Ridge. How about that? Right now, and I know you know this, that there's a Bruce Springsteen exhibit happening at a museum in your hometown of Freehold, New Jersey. <laughs> and <laughs> which has to be weird, right? I mean, dinosaurs they put on exhibit, you know? I know. I know. I actually went down there and uh, I played a couple of tunes with the band the night they opened the thing. And it's in, it's a little, it's in our, it's a small town and there's this small history museum and uh -huh. and they have a some things about me in there. You did know? you learn anything about yourself? I, I did. I I actually did. There were, I, you know, most there's a, plenty of people that know more about me than I do. And so I went down there and. They traced the Springsteens all the way back to the Revolutionary War. Wow. And uh, Which side were you on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but, uh, and then they traced up to the Civil War. And then the, the most interesting thing was they had a small parlor guitar, which is what people played in those days. It was a small guitar about this big going back to the 1800s, supposedly from one of my relatives. Wow. So I'm not the first guitar player in the Springsteen. That is fantastic. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Did they tell you how they got a hold of that? No. No. <laughs> is it possible that it's just completely made up? It is. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> did you get a chance to hold I and play not. that guitar? You didn't. No, it was behind plexiglass. Wow. <laughs> I loved your movie. You, you co-directed this movie with Tom Zimney. And wh why did you want to direct this one? Well, my director's credit is at, is at the generosity of Tom Zimney. I didn't come anywhere near a camera. I see. But, uh, but we kind of conceptualized the whole thing together, uh, starting from the beginning. And... Uh, it was just a big collaboration between the two of us. You did actually shoot some of the movie yourself, some of the home movies. <laughs> There's a great scene in this movie. I love the scene so much. It's your honeymoon with Patty, and you, it seems like you set the camera maybe on the table or yeah, something. Yeah, we had a little camera, uh -huh. and it was 1988, and... Uh, we were shooting some videos on, on our honeymoon, uh -huh. and <laughs> I put it on the hood of the car, and, and, and the, rest was, it, the rest is in the film. It's very yeah. sweet. It really yeah. is. Uh, you know, we, we used to, when the kids were little, we used to shoot a lot. And then, uh -huh. but, but we did the same thing everybody else does, which is you shoot it, and it goes in a box, and you don't look at it again for 33 years. Yeah. You know? so, did you uh, go through all of that stuff for this Tom, movie? I, I, Tom Zimney did, and, and he had gone through all of our home videos and gave them to me for Christmas. Kind of put them on CDs and gave. Oh, them that's to great! Me, gave it to me for Christmas. Were the kids of... into watching that and watching no. mom and dad as? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my kids are not into. I always believe your kids are into you watching them. Yes, right. Well, that is how it's supposed to go. <laughs> I always said, "There's, you got kids. Kids don't want to go anywhere." and see 50,000 people cheering for their parents. <laughs> they would like to see 50,000 people boo their parents. Well, that would be worth coming out for. Sometimes it sounds like people are booing you. That would you be know. worth coming out for, but cheering for your parents, there's no kid that wants to see 50,000 people cheer for their parents. Yeah, so maybe not, yeah. Our, our kids are relatively uninterested, have been relatively un uninterested in, in the job that I've done their entire lives. I, you know, one of the things that, <laughs> that I, I, was, I was watching the movie and of course, you know, I, I know your music and, but you're speaking in between songs in the movie 
and you speak so beautifully and you have a lot of wisdom. Do you feel that that's true, that you have a lot of wisdom? Uh, yeah. I've picked up a few things. Picked up a few things. <laughs> Do you ever, what's the dumbest thing you ever wrote? Is there anything? <laughs> Because, I, honestly, I felt like I had to concentrate to really take your words in and, and understand them. Really? Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. I'm not that bright. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was all pretty... The, the film is pretty direct, you know? It's, it is it's, direct. It's, it's, but you say things like living in good faith is, is something that is important. What does that mean, living in good faith? Means, maybe it means something different to, to everybody. Just trying to... Stay for me. It's just time, just trying to stay on a straight, straight track, and 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 with honest transactions between the people that I care about and people that I meet every day, you know. But it can take you a while to get there. I mean, the film is basically about the journey that everybody takes from, from their in their their definitions of freedom. When you're young, it's all about I want to go where I want to go. Mm -hmm. I want to do what I want to do. I'm going to be who I want to be, and that. That's okay through your 20s, and, but somewhere in your 30s, it starts to catch up with you, and uh, your, your definition of freedom has to expand to include uh, family, your, your civic life, um, you know, the community that you're involved in. And if it doesn't, you're kind of, you get stuck out in the cold, you know, really out And you've the been cold. there, out in the cold. A little bit, you know, and... Uh, because I'm in a job that that is that retards your growth by by nature, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So uh, I mean, what I do, they still call playing, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, it's not really called working. It's called yeah. No. Playing. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got to work a show tonight. So, <laughs> it means you're behind the scenes, probably. Yeah. yeah. So that 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 journey, I think, for people in maybe in the arts period, but certainly in the music business, it can be a bit of a Bit of a go. Yeah. Well, we're <laughs> going to take a break. We're going to see a clip from the movie. Bruce Springsteen is here. His movie is called Western Stars. We'll be right back. A love song. It's the redemption of your heart. Your soul transformed. Through hard thought, hard times, and hard realizations. We drive out of the darkness into sunshine and love. Quote, you fall in love with lonely, you end up that way. I wish on you and yours only love, companionship, God's blessing, and a guiding light through the dark for all your days. That is Bruce Springsteen, Western Stars. It opened the theaters on Friday. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I know you hear it all the time, but for me, it's a little bit alarming when I suddenly hear that. Where's the strangest place you people have said, Bruce? Do you get that in the bathroom or anything like that? Well, it, uh, it always turned me back. My, my grandfather, who was this sort of five foot five, old world Italian man, used to go, Bruce, Bruce. <laughs> I, used to, I used to go visit him every Sunday. And I would go every Sunday, and he had a dollar. And he would sit on this throne in his, in his sitting room and, Bruce, come here. I'd come closer. I'd come a little bit closer and he'd get my cheek like this. And then he would start squeezing that thing and spinning that thing. And finally he'd pull it off you. I'd, my tears would be running down my face. And he'd go, Bruce, what's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> And then I would get my dollar, you know? <laughs> but I had to suffer through that. But that was the first. His. So now, whenever I hear it, it, it reminds me of my. You think of your grandfather. It reminds me of my grandfather. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> you did something interesting. You went to uh, a theater that was showing your movie, and you surprised the audience there in Freehold. Did they lose their minds? Well, it is my hometown, and yeah. I, I am seen somewhat semi-often there. I see. But yeah, you know, everybody got a kick out of it. Did you stay and watch the movie? I with watched them? a little of it, which was fun because uh, if you get a chance, you should see it on a big screen with with good speakers. Good speakers, good because we worked hard on on the way it looks, and we worked hard on getting the sound right. And uh, 
It sounds great. It sounded you, you recorded really it and shot it in your barn at yeah. your home. How did you decide who got to be in that audience? In, or were they only people you knew? Relatives uh -huh. and just friends of some friends. So you have like cousins and stuff in, in the lot. barn? Yeah. We have, we, we moved back to New Jersey in the mid 90s. We moved back because we had a, 80 member Italian Irish family. Uh -huh. And that was the way that I grew up. So I wanted my kids to have that sense of, of a bigger world mm -hmm. than the entertainment world. I wanted them to see people that did a lot of other things, be around people who would shape them. Uh, and they, they would have a lot of options because my job is so weird <laughs> that to look at it, it, it's not really a model for how you're going to go out and live your life. and the many different things you can do. So they had a lot of relatives to look towards, uncles and cousins, and uh, it, was a, it was a good growing up experience for me when I was young, and it was good for them too. So uh, I'm seen in my hometown semi-regularly, but everybody, everybody got a laugh out of it. Is it true that you once opened for Cheech and Chong? I did. <laughs> Where was that? Now, people forget, but Cheech and Chong were huge. Oh, sure, yeah. Huge at the time, up in smoke. People and used to smoke marijuana back then. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> it's a big thing in those days. And the first gig I ever did when I had my first record out was opening for Cheech and Chong in a small college <laughs> in Pennsylvania. And I came out and we played about five songs. I thought it was going really good. I was sitting at the piano and somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> That was it, you know? So. Wow. Well, it's so great to have you here, and the movie is fantastic. It's called Western Stars. It opens in theaters Friday. Bruce Springsteen, everybody. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks for watching, and remember, every time you click the subscribe button, one of your enemies gets destroyed.